What's going on, everybody? It is episode 187 of The Hype. Cody here. Dan. Is What's along going on, Cody? I actually wasn't sure if you were going to start it off or not. So, like, I was just waiting. <laughs> And I was like, is it going to be me? Is it going to be you? And then we had that little pause and you you took it. I just took the ball and ran. You took the ball and ran with it. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm not trying to steal the company or anything. No, I I love it. I love it. I'm I'm the sidekick, man. I'm the sidekick. (laughs) Uh, yeah, Doug is not here uh, to start the episode, but later on, Doug and I, uh, actually, you'll see, I, we're going to travel back in time because I actually have longer hair in the second part of this video, so that'll be a little fun. We have to go back to the future and talk Bowman Baseball, which if you are watching this here on the Mojo Break media feed, our video, you guys are probably noticing we're doing Bowman all day long on the main feed Bowman baseball it's here uh, one of the biggest releases of the year so we're breaking that all day long uh, if you're watching us on Mojo Break Media live right now head on over to Mojo Break and that's where you'll find some Bowman baseball breaks all day long you look forward to Bowman I'm Dave? looking forward to Bowman I am I always look forward to Bowman and I'm looking forward to at least one super fractor at least one you gotta in order to have a bowman release day right. you gotta have one super we may have already hit it for, and for all we know we could have and i'm i'm calling it i'm calling it early morning super fractor we're Yo- gonna pull it yoelki super fractor calling it first hobby case for, calling the it. first first well we're doing two jumbos right first hobby case i'm calling super fractor it's a bold i don't know who it's gonna be but I can feel it. It's a bold statement. Well, so if, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. That's, <laughs> if it doesn't happen, I'll be like, ah, I was way Dan off. Dan <laughs> Uh But we are also talking about a couple other big releases coming this week, which we've already broken some on Monday. F1, Tops Chrome. Uh, I think this is kind of a theme that we're going to be talking about here is there are some really big releases this week that go beyond the world of baseball, football, basketball, hockey, even soccer with the alternative sports things like f1 are hot in the streets right now things like ufc prism are big right now there's a lot of hype surrounding those releases uh this i i I think in the last year dan we've kind of talked about what are the trends in the hobby of course as the hobby has gained prominence to where it's become uh mainstream in 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 our culture uh once again and now i think we're starting to see how big is this thing going to be where uh, now things like Formula One and things like UFC, which uh, I don't know, I want to call UFC like on the fringes of the sports world anymore. It's firmly like right in the you middle You could make an argument that it's getting close to taking over the NHL for popularity. It's really close. I it's mean, definitely gone ahead of boxing. It's, in terms it, of it, it's, it's absolutely, it's absolutely taken over boxing. But yeah, it's uh, it's on the tails of, uh, of NHL. Now, and we've talked about it before. NHL getting that going to be broadcast on ESPN. I think that's going to be a huge boost. Yeah, just signed um, a deal with Turner Sports. Turner Sports. Yep. So that's going to be a huge boost to to NHL because that was the issue. I mean, I grew up watching NHL Tonight. I think you you grew up watching NHL right. Tonight. And besides, I, I think they had NHL TV at some point. I don't even know if they have that anymore. The NHL Channel. I think NHL Network is still NHL Network. Too. Yeah, but I. You know, I miss my NHL tonight. Hopefully they bring it back. We'll see. But, uh, yeah, I mean, F1. uh, We'll start talking about that. Chrome. Iconic release through all the categories. I mean, they've had... Topps has had Chrome basketball back in the day. The iconic 0304 LeBron James Chrome. Uh, It's a flagship release for all of baseball. Bowman Chrome. Topps Chrome. Uh, They've actually... I mean, when they had the license, they had Topps Chrome football. Um it was a great way, and it wasn't this. The Formula One, Topps Chrome wasn't the first release. They did have Dynasty, which is an ultra high end one encased patch auto, or sometimes just on card uh, auto. But Chrome, um, a great way to introduce that category to the masses. Yeah, it, it absolutely is. I think it's such a good move for them to, like you said, use a flagship product the everyone likes shiny yep and to introduce this uh at least on tops side to introduce that to the world uh, as the formula one being introduced to the tops brand uh i don't think we're gonna make any argument that like 
F1 is going to take over basketball cards and baseball cards. No one feels that way. But I think that there is definitely... I think this is showing, one, the strength of the hobby right now, that things like F1 are super in demand, the prices are high, uh, and which of these sports, I guess, of, you know, you're looking at F1, UFC, I think we can even go beyond. We saw golf have a little bit of a resurgence. Uh, which yeah, of those do you think Upper Deck, the upper deck has the golf license, yeah. and they are going to release a... They're going to get back into releasing golf. Um, that product everybody is speculating is going to go through the roof so you're right i mean these these alternate sports like categories are blowing up star wars has always been very consistent they i mean we get allocated on that stuff actually the last couple star wars i put in pre-orders and i got zero um they don't make a ton of it huge fan base for star wars and their fans even even if you're not a trading card collector if you're a star wars fan you're going to be into Star Wars trading cards. Yeah, um, yeah, that's a, a, a totally other untapped uh, thing that we haven't even really touched on a lot on the show. We talk about Pokemon sometimes, mm-hmm. but like, yeah, entertainment cards as well, where Star Wars and Marvel are super strong brands. But yep. uh, to go back to the alternative sports, it's kind of maybe a combination of the entertainment and sports. Um, some of the things we've mentioned, but the one that I think, and it's probably already at a point where it's like, dude, it has been taken off, is WWE. Uh, oh, yeah. I think you saw, like, the Dwayne Johnson, the car. I mean, I know it's a football card, but that Dwayne Johnson University of Miami card, those, anytime you see that go up for sale, whether it be on a, whatever secondary market or eBay, it's going for crazy money right now. I think that's the one that has the most potential of the sort of, the second tier mm-hmm. of sports cards to really take off just because of one, you have sort of the entertainment factor in it. And I think a lot of sports uh, personalities, a lot of athletes also really dig that stuff. I think that's the one to watch if you're thinking of which of these alternate sports, like if I want to, if you're into that investment mode, I think for me, I would look at WWE. Yeah, WWE has been, and Tops has a license for that as well, and it's always been a solid category for them to the point where they've actually released a transcendent WWE, um, and that is a you know $25,000 box. I mean, that's like the the tippy top of the of of any product um so if they are willing to make a product at that price point you know that there is substantial um you know i'm trying to think what i'm saying here (laughs) uh substantial like drive for that so like people definitely are looking for it you actually look at uh and it's crazy because a lot of these fighters or these wrestlers um they sign at tons of different events um, there's no shortage of their autos, but you look at like Stone Cold, his autos go through the roof. Undertaker, his autos are through the roof. Hulk Hogan's been signing forever. His autos are through the roof. The Rock, obviously, through the roof. Yeah. Like It's crazy that there is no shortage of these entertainers' autos, but they still catch a premium. So Yeah, it, it is that perfect, like that, that in-between where... You, I mean, you get an autograph of, like, a, a Dwayne Johnson of The Rock. Like, again, that is one of the biggest stars of the world on top of him being a wrestling superstar. I guess maybe UFC maybe has the most potential to also sort of crack into that as well. Uh, there is a feeling of, like, the, the personalities of wrestling uh, that are in UFC, except, you know, there's the reality of, like, there is – it's real combat. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think that that also has a really big potential to to make that – that jump and of course being associated with the prism brand for ufc now that they've they've moved over to panini i think also makes them uh, uh really of these of these sports we're talking about the other one that can make that leap into the mainstream yeah i think the the, the real big demand and like you're saying the leap in prices for ufc is what I feel is because it is Prism. And even even if it's not gonna be like a rookie auto or like a future star auto, it's gonna be all these fighters first Prism card. So, exactly. I mean, you could actually look at it and go, yeah, it's not, maybe they've been fighting for five, six years, but it's their first Prism. So you look at 1213, which was the first basketball Prism, all those players get a premium. Curry, I mean, any yeah. star player. I mean, almost at the point where, like, any common from 1213 
is worth a pretty substantial amount of money for being a base card. I think you're going to see the same exact thing. And I think that's what people are speculating with the UFC is that no matter who the fighter is, it's their first prism. So yeah. the base cards and the parallels, you're not even going to be looking for the autos as much as you're going to be looking for the parallels and even the base cards. Which if we end up breaking that, which I know that's, again, hot in the streets, hard to come by, but uh, it'll make it easier for us because uh, I'm I'm admittedly not the biggest UFC guy. You know, you got to know what you don't know. But every every card you pull, like, hey, what a hit. First prism. Yeah, I don't know. I one. don't know much. And I really don't know UFC. <laughs> uh, yeah, UFC and Formula One. We're talking about two things that I I've never watched a Formula yeah, One. Yeah, that's the thing. It's it's. <laughs> it, I think it is also. This is the thing that I, this is our, our personal problems. Like, uh, it, I think I realize I got to start watching a lot more stuff if we're gonna break a lot of this. Yeah, stuff that's because... gonna be a hard sell to the wife. I don't. I don't know. I don't know about you, but like. <laughs> If I basically uh, Look, go... Look, I got to be up at 3 a.m. Uh, there's a race in Monaco. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm sorry. That's, that's part of the job. I got to know who we're breaking. I know Lewis Hamilton, but that's as far as... I, I mean, I, I just picked up NASCAR the last year. Um, I think if I go and tell the wife that I'm I'm going to have to follow another sport, she'll be like, you need to chill out. Yeah. Like, you you need to stop. <laughs> it, it, it might be. That, that's where, yeah, it, it might get a little bit tough uh, for that, but... It's it's incredible, I think, to see just the growth of the hobby that these sports that I think when you guys were starting 10 years ago, you wouldn't even be thinking if somebody said, hey, you want these cards? Like, no, go away. And now it's uh, I mean, we had like I said, we had an F1 break that was sold out like instantly or it was, you know, it's 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 pretty incredible to see just how much it's grown. And I think it also speaks to how much it's uh, the the fan base of the hobby of the types of people who collect uh has grown and you you throw out something like an f1 product or a ufc that is high quality product like you're gonna open yourselves up to a whole new clientele that it would never even probably yeah touch. and i i go back to yeah i mean not even that long ago 2014 uh prism world cup came out and we got a bunch of it and i mean watch a little bit of soccer but i wouldn't say i watch enough of soccer to really know i mean i know you know ronaldo messi like the main 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 players but like i remember struggling to sell that i remember doing giveaways just giving it away to people um same thing with 2018 2018 world cup we were literally giving it away we were doing personal boxes at 20 percent below cost Doug just bought a box for thirty two hundred dollars. Yeah, that's a, I was gonna. Uh, that's we, the thing. If we you, couldn't sell it for eighty dollars, right? <laughs> I, that and that's why uh, if somebody's watching and saying, "Why aren't you talking about soccer?" Because I don't consider that in that that category anymore of this alternative sports category. I think it is now firmly in the big now the big five yeah i think that i mean we get people buying mls we get people obviously the the uh, premier league stuff is incredibly popular the world cup stuff is is incredibly popular i don't think you can consider that uh in this alternative category anymore soccer uh, is one of the top sports in it's sports it, and it's worldwide and it has been it, it, yeah. it's inter, it's international you go it's, outside it's, of america and it has always been uh, up at the top yeah. in terms of culture. and with group breaking i mean we do probably 15 to 20 percent of our orders are actually international so we have a pretty substantial international clientele so when you have soccer and you have f1 that's that's gonna sell yeah. and i think that is really what is also driving the domestic market up on everything the singles the the boxes the the cases it's the market's growing and it's growing internationally not just domestically yeah it's incredible to see uh before we do move on to our bowman segment i do just have to throw out speaking of everything growing in this market uh the lebron james exquisite rpa that sold pwcc sold it uh for 5.2 million dollars. we were right yesterday yeah we were we were talking about this and i remember i told you and doug i'm like i thought it was over 5 million and then doug was like no i think it was like a million and then you were like, no, somebody was saying $5 million. It's 5 million. So it tied the highest ever, which was the, the 52 Mickey Mantle. Mantle. Yeah, the 52 Mantle ties that. 
Um, I, I almost feel like a broken record at this point that every single time a new one sells, and you could speak to it too, that it's like, what, it can't get bigger than this. And yet it always finds a way, it, in, and in such a short amount of time, it has found a way to, I mean, I think every two to three months, and that's not an exaggeration. Every two to three months, we are talking about a new card setting a new standard. Well, I mean, you've been here for about like eight months since july yeah so and there's so, already been i think four record-breaking so, yeah cards. and we maybe it's you <laughs> <laughs> it's all thanks to me you're it's, welcome it, that's what cody does he comes in he changes the market single-handedly <laughs> um no i mean but it's crazy we've had this conversation multiple times we've done the hype and we're like all right card sold for two million dollars we'll never see that again yeah. that that's that's the peak um we had a good run but two million dollars, never, never gonna surpass that. And then we hit three million. Well, that that's never gonna happen. Now we're at five million. We joked about it before. In six months, in a year, are we gonna be like, well, we finally had our card, one card sell for ten million dollars? I I really think that's gonna happen by the end of the year. At this point. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm at the point now, and I remember. I think in November when there was, uh, I can't remember what card it was that had a record sale, but I think I threw out five million as an over under. Uh, yeah, like is this what are, in six months? Five million over under? And you can probably go back and look at the tape. I probably <laughs> downer Dan was like, nope. Not going to happen. We're not going to see five million. And it's happened <laughs> twice since. <laughs> it's happened twice since. Uh, it's it's incredible to see. It shows the amount of money that is getting thrown into this thing. I think the Luca one was also. See, here's the thing: is the, the the LeBron in the mantle. Like, I get it. Five million for literally the best version of the mantle card and literally the best version of the LeBron card. But the Luca card that sold for what four million? I think is the moment I went. Things are getting insane. As great as he is, that just seems when i wild. was seeing Still seems when i was seeing jordan rookies floating around the one million dollar mark like you know three quarters of a million dollars and stuff like that i'm like this is ridiculous because i i remember when these cards were you can get them for under you can get them for around 20 grand they made a lot of those cards uh, every day you can go on eBay and you and it may not be a gem mint 10 but you could find a PSA rookie of Michael Jordan when the Kobe Bryant's when same thing. people were selling 89 Ken Griffey Jr upper deck cards for $4500 5 grand I was buying those for buybacks for $300 and I remember I was like, this is an iconic card, but I don't know if people are going to see the value because there's so many of them. Everybody, everybody that I know collected cards had an 89 upper deck rookie Ken Griffey Jr. Probably not graded, but everybody right. had one. And something. Um, because they may have made a million of them. <laughs> Five grand. That, that right there was like, I had to take a step back and go, okay. What is happening? And you've seen some fluctuation. The Jordan cards have come down. Yeah. The Ken Griffey Jr. cards have come down. Um, you look at it and go, was there some market manipulation going on at that time? Who knows? That's that's the thing that I do kind of come back on when I have to like think about why is this happening? It's not just, you know, obviously the hobby's grown, but I think there's also an influx of sort of a stock market Wall Street mentality that's entered with obviously a lot of different apps where you can, and new marketplaces where you can sell your cards and you invest a little bit in your card like a stock market. So I think there are a lot of these big sales are those types of guys who are looking at it as an investment and they're not thinking of it as like, or they're just, it's again, or it's a flex of just like, I have the money to do this and I want to show it off to everybody. Um, but I think that's really why is that you have those types of people who now have entered the hobby on top of the people who are. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's saying, hard. Looks cool. It's hard to do market manipulation with something that is like obviously short printed. Yeah. The LeBrons have been selling the exquisites. Those are numbered. There's a limited amount of those. Uh, same thing with like the Luca Logo Man, obviously. Like 
hard to compare it to anything else. There's only one of them. Um, but when you start looking at these mass-produced rookie cards that are gem tens, like the Griffey, you look at the PSA pop report, and it is there's not a limited amount of tens out there. Right. So if you take and I, and this is hypothetical and this is kind of a conspiracy, but if you basically have somebody, a group of people who are like, all right, there's a lot of these cards. It's an iconic card. We're gonna swoop up every single one we possibly can. So we're gonna have, say, there's a thousand PSA tens. We're gonna have. 250 of them and then we're going to start putting them out into the market and this group is going to bid them up and we're going to have completed auctions of five thousand dollars well we have five of them sell for that amount now we've kind of set the bar that's the new market now this group has 245 of those left now they bought them for you know three hundred dollars now they're worth five thousand now you start pushing them out into the market and you have other people buying them and it just, you know, artificially grows the market. I yeah. mean, I, I don't know if that happens, but it with the with the King Kirby Juniors, it was and and the Trouts, the the Trout yeah. 2011 tops update. When all of a sudden it was like a six thousand yeah, dollar card. Like a couple months ago, that yeah. was happening. I was yeah. like, what what is going on? And I'm like, there these cards are not limited. So I look at those types of cards that are mass produced huge pop report and start going through the roof as there probably is some type of funny thing right. going on in the market that we're not really sure of yeah and yeah and i think again it speaks to sort of the types of people and the types of mentalities entering the hobby that have entered in the last year yeah you're right especially the ones with a lot of the money it's not that yeah. you know the, the casual people who have entered the hobby again who saw hey this is cool it's taking off again it's not about that it's yeah it's the people who have seen it more as the investment side rather than the i like to collect side so yeah pump it, it, pump and dump i mean you could uh, also yeah. you could also look yeah. at it and maybe maybe it's uh people who were into crypto who are starting to get into right. cards i and mean that, yeah it's all i mean when you're investing it's all about it's all about like diversifying your portfolio right. so if you're into crypto you don't want to have all your eggs in one basket you're going to go into maybe stocks you're going to go into real estate you're going to go into trading cards and i think trading cards was never really thought of as an investment but now i think those people who do investments are looking at it as a viable investment yeah. and an asset uh obligatory gotta ask it uh let's say uh, over under six months this record gets broken for the LeBron card, no, I, I I don't think so. I don't I don't. I, You're taking the I, You're I, taking I gotta take. I gotta. Yeah, I gotta say no. I don't think so. I don't think it does. I uh, I I think I think we basically are. I hate. I mean, I hate to say. It. I think we're. I think we're basically just surpassed the peak. I think we're gonna. I think you're. You've seen it with the basketball market a little bit. The current basketball market. It's starting to trend down a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the bottom isn't falling out by any means, but it's starting to slowly trend down. And it also has to do with the season winding down. Uh, you had some of the, you had Wiseman out for the year. You had uh, the kid for the uh, the Wizards. Oh, Adiha went down. Adi yeah, Adiha went down. Uh, Lamelo was yeah, hurt. He's he, been hurt. He'll he's, be back. He's soon. Com he's coming back. So. That also plays into the prices starting to trickle down on individual cards, but uh, it just takes one good rookie class. Though, yeah, for, and, and this is supposed to be a really good rookie class for the NBA. Yeah, I mean we say that every year. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I guess that kid Suggs is going to be. Yeah. The kid from Oklahoma State. Kid from really Oklahoma good. State. Yeah. Um, I go back to football. Football this coming draft is going to be insane. This coming. 2021 football yeah we haven't even mentioned hobby. the draft which we'll, we'll probably get into that next week when we're the draft's fully complete but yeah it's gonna be but crazy. hold on because like that is going to the, the next year's football releases are going to be maybe the hottest we've ever seen any category do. i don't think there's that's even a doubt i don't even think it's a doubt that's, and that's and you look at you look at football and football it it's again like basketball it's all about the rookie class baseball 
is always going to be steady. It's always going to be right there, really consistent. There's always going to be prospects that are put into a Bowman release that go unnoticed initially. And then like the Cody Bellingers and the Acunas, like when those products released, those were not the players that you were specifically looking for. Right. Um, so there's always those prospects that basically go under the radar during release. And then they're the marquee player that you're chasing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I'll, I'll, going to make a point with the way I think there is going to be a card that is going to top that LeBron James, I think, in the next, I'll say, six months, 12 months. Yeah. Uh, but but I do want to get back to baseball. What, what card? Uh, I'll get to that in a second. Because uh, I, <laughs> I got this point about baseball I want to make. Uh, because I do think there, I've, I've mentioned it before, I really, really do believe that like this next draft class for baseball, you are actually going to see for the first time. And maybe this is me just being too big a baseball fan and not reading the room and realizing that not everyone is insane about baseball like I am, but it's going to be a draft at the All-Star game. Going to be a lot more eyes on it than usual. There's no no other events happening in the sports world other than the All-Star game and this year the MLB draft. And that's going to be the best opportunity for baseball to create actual big names to be drafted. And it helps that you have a program like Vanderbilt right now that is actually a marquee program where the top two players are are going to come out of there. So I do think there's going to be a bit of a change here. If there's any year where like Bowman draft actually is goes through the roof, it is this year. I do like how Major League Baseball is putting a little jet fuel behind their draft process. They've needed it because for if years. you've ever watched in Major League Baseball draft, it's like watching paint dry. It is. It, it I mean you if you think baseball's boring, <laughs> just wait till the draft. Just wait till the draft. And I mean, they it, it it's funny because it goes hand in hand with the one issue that people have with baseball. It's slow. It's boring. The draft fits right in with that. Yeah, I mean, it's true. It's true to what people hate about the game. And MLB Network just made that decision to air the MLB draft. What I think in two thousand nine, and could not have gotten luckier. You know that only one player showed up for that draft in nine. So in 09? Strasburg. One Mike Trout. Oh. The only guy to show up oh. to the studios in New Jersey. And that's kind of why, like, you ask the, the younger players who show up now, it's because they want to be Mike Trout. Like, oh, I saw him show up to the draft. Now I'm going to show up. Yeah. Uh, and I think then, Strasburg was a year after. But they're also doing, aren't they doing some type of home run derby well, type they, of deal, like, a, during the All-Star? A few years ago, they started the high school home run derby. Yeah, the Bla- that was Blaze, Blaze Jordan, Jordan took off. And I think they saw, oh, look at this hype we've built for this kid. And mm-hmm. you're seeing it now with today's Bowman release that Blaze Jordan's one of those guys that everybody wants. Uh, and, yeah, I think they're, they're finally realizing we can hype up these guys that just like the NBA draft does and just like the NFL draft does. We can, we're able to hype up these guys. And maybe in a way they see, like, the NBA draft, the way it's changing, where a lot more players are going international. Mm-hmm. The college stuff is not as big a deal. Maybe that baseball scene, okay, how do we – not become that we're already not that relevant when it comes to college how can we at least you know put our foot in the door a little bit i mean you look at the way football does their draft and they make it an experience mm-hmm. um scouting combine scouting con yeah, yeah i mean and Thomas then Jordan. it it basically it's one of the most exciting things to watch throughout the whole season i mean i i, I love watching the nfl draft i look yeah. forward to it it's an entertaining product. Um, it, the way the way they the way they perform it, the way they do it, they always have it. I mean, before COVID, they would have it like, you know, they'd have like five, six, seven thousand fans there. Um, I think one year they had it in like Chicago. They had tons of fans there. Yeah, uh, it's definitely like I really, an experience. It's such a shame they didn't get to do it. In, I mean, obviously for obvious reasons, but the, to not do it in Vegas last year. Yeah, Vegas in front and of the fountains at the uh, was it the Bellagio? And where are they doing it this year? Is Cleveland, it? Cleveland. So you know, just a step below Vegas. Uh, yeah, I've I've been to both, and it's a toss. <laughs> no it, offense, Cleveland. I've been to both. It's Very a nice people. It's a toss up, man. It's a toss up. <laughs> um. No, Vegas would be very cool for the draft. Yeah, uh, it will happen I, there when they can. I I, you're probably going to see it in SoFi, the new uh, the new stadium uh, for the Rams and Chargers. Yeah. I think uh, the NFL Network headquarters is based out of LA. Oh, so it's Glendale, yeah, yeah. over there. Yeah. So I know we kind of gone all, all over the place here, but the point is, uh, 
it, you're seeing, I think, all three major sports that we collect, baseball, basketball, football, all three are going to have potentially really good draft classes. So if you were thinking maybe 2021 things are going to go down, the LeBron James sale and the current draft classes that we're awaiting, I think kind of show like don't think that's happening i think you're finally gonna see i mean it's gonna be you're gonna dig it pitcher is gonna get a lot of love because the main i mean first pick overall is should be it's probably gonna be jack Leiter. okay and then you're looking at we talked about it before mark the, mark Leiter's kid uh al Leiter. al Leiter's kid. I, kid i think i did that last time too al's kid <laughs> uh his uncle is mark mark Leiter, so the former go. former giant I, great correct me if i'm wrong i'm pretty sure that's al's kid um uh, and then Kumar Rocker, who is the number two pitcher, who actually was expected. And that to is be John the- Rocker's kid. <laughs> Couldn't be further <laughs> from the truth. Is uh, it, is it not, not, it's not. Most definitely not. <laughs> I went, uh, I went for John it. Rocker I went for it. I- <laughs> uh, he will be uh, probably, he was expected to be the number one pick. Okay. Probably will either be, he'll be top four. There's four guys who are like locked in in those top four pitcher? spots. Pitcher? Also a pitcher. Okay, so... Uh, Al Leiter threw, or, or, or uh, Jack Leiter threw a no-hitter earlier okay. this year. And Kumar Rocker, I want to say, had like a 15 strikeout game. So both college guys. Both college guys. Both go to Vanderbilt. So uh, fast track to the MLB, probably. Very fast. Because that, that, that's also the thing with you get a high school pitcher go in the top you know, 10. They're going to have to go to the minors and learn how to pitch. They may have electric stuff, but they got there's a process of learning how to pitch. Right. Uh, where you kind of learn that in college. So you yeah. kind of get that fast track to the show. Yeah. So and maybe most... maybe we'll see those guys in they get drafted this year, maybe maybe late next year. I would say maybe 23 would be I'm sure that's what they're going to put the ETA is 2023. Yep. Um could be sooner. Uh and I think the most recent pitcher I can think of out of Vanderbilt Walker Bueller. He's pretty oh, good. He's pretty good. He's pretty good. He's pretty good. So, uh, I, okay, I said I was going to mention what card I think is going to break the record, and I actually don't think it's that much of a mystery. I think it's Patrick Mahomes. I think Patrick Mahomes, If I guess the caveat is, if Patrick Mahomes has another Super Bowl by the end of February 2022, I think he ends up breaking the record. Okay, that's, that's fair enough. Um, I think... And it could be sooner. I think that could. Eh? I mean, that that could be it. I mean, you you think of basketball, and you're like, what what basketball card could it be? Mm-hmm. I don't. I I think I think we've already. I think LeBron is kind of the peak, right? I don't. Yeah. I don't know if we can, unless. Uh, yeah, because they didn't. They didn't. I don't think they made one of ones. Yeah, I of, should say. I know, and I know that it sounds crazy, like that, because what we just saw, Tom Brady, that Tom Brady rookie finally break the football record and it's not even sniffing the all-time record but i just think that the combination of mahomes coming to prominence in the hobby boom era and him being young enough where there's a sort of the luca feel of like well i'm doing this because four or five million dollars on this card now will look like a bargain in 10 years is what the person buying it feels like so, yeah, uh, yeah. That's that's maybe it's going out on a limb, but I think that Mahomes. Is no, there. I mean, I think uh, I could see that. I could see that, like some kind of crazy, like prism one of one, or right. may, maybe like a maybe maybe the shield RPA yeah, from National say, I Treasures. Can't, I can't pin down exactly what card that is, but I think you it, would know. And NT that. NT yeah. shield that, that would that uh, would, be my would, guess. would probably be it. Um, but yeah, that's. And you don't with Mahomes like his story is still being written. Right. Like he he could he can go off and he could win five Super Bowls. Right. I mean he could win more. He can win six. He can win seven. He can beat he can beat Brady's record. Who yeah. knows? He's young. He's still young. Um, the Chiefs are good. I don't think they're gonna go through a rebuilding process anytime soon. Uh, he's there forever, yeah. pretty I, much. He signed a huge contract. So yeah. yeah, I mean that's crazy. I got a couple things before we go. Um, not card related. Explain your shirt. Is that is that Bob's Big Boy? But that's Bob's Burgers. Bob's Burgers in the and Bob's it, Big it, Boy uniform. It says Big Bob, Big Bob for for Big Boy's Burgers. Yeah, Southern California staple. And uh, yeah, I like it. Bob's Burgers. I like it. I like it. Like, it is a great show. Love that show. And Mortal Kombat <laughs> came out on HBO. Um, did you watch it? I haven't watched it. Yet. You haven't watched, I haven't watched it. it. Oh man, have you seen the original one? 
years ago. You know what, though? I was a little too young to probably watch the original. So if I had, it was bits and pieces. It, it, I, I think I think I it was, was I think it was definitely I, I want to say it was like a PG-13, maybe. I wouldn't call myself a shielded child. I mean, my mom let us watch The Simpsons at probably far too young an age. So thanks for that, mom. Uh, <laughs> honestly, I, I genuinely mean that. Thank you. Uh, uh, and, but. Even Mortal Kombat, I think, might have been a step too far for something. Yeah, like, no, you're I, not gonna play that. Yeah, uh, so I the, think that. So I think that just that I, I didn't discover it till uh, probably in my teenage. The years. game was brutal. The game was like nothing I have ever right. seen when I when I played when it came out. And I'm dating myself here. Uh, when Mortal Kombat came out, I was probably ten, uh, right in the heyday of my video game playing career. And for something to come out where you can, like, there was blood, mm -hmm. real blood, and you can, like, do a fatality and rip somebody's heart out, uh, yeah, you could sign me up. Sign up the 10-year-old me. I'm into it. Um, and it's a video game, so, like, it was cool. Like, don't worry about it. Like, yeah. I was like... I'm all, how bad can it be? Like Mario Brothers is a video game. Mortal Kombat video game. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> now, but, see, for me, the the um, moment I go from, uh, yeah, playing Mario to something more adult is uh, around the same age as you, 10, 11, maybe, maybe 12. Uh, it's when I start playing Grand Theft Auto 3. Okay. Where that was the moment, you know, where you're doing things that I can't even say on camera. Right Grand now. Theft Auto Definitely gnarlier than Mortal Kombat. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> it's I, I think it teaches maybe, you a life of crime, right? Yeah, <laughs> I'm thinking about it now. Uh, Mortal Kombat, pretty tame compared to the things I was doing. In because Grand in Grand Theft Auto, you can basically stop playing the actual game and just start going around just and just rage chaos on a city you're just stealing cars you're punching people in the face it's it's a pretty gnarly game mortal Kombat was definitely a lot more tamer than there's at least like uh there's a set of rules you have to follow whereas <laughs> knock yourself out you but, want you want to put in a cheat code and jump off of a moving helicopter and then <laughs> with a rocket launcher strap your back be my guest Mortal Kombat, you got to hit a bunch of buttons and you might be able to do some type of fatality. But uh, yeah, definitely like are not wreaking chaos on a on a city. Uh, but yeah, I highly recommend it. Um, it is rated R. Like it is a lot. It's a lot gnarlier Good. than the original. The original I kind of thought is it, it was similar to Street Fighter when Street Fighter came out. Yeah. Um, Mortal Kombat came out around the same time and definitely trying to ride each one trying to ride off each other's coattails. Yeah, but this was well done. Highly recommend it. Not sports card related. Maybe they'll make a Mortal Kombat sports card. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, we're just waiting. Uh, you know what? Actually, we should probably look on eBay. Maybe there's some Mortal Kombat cards. There might be around somewhere. There might if be. They are. Stay tuned. Uh, Sweet. All right. We're <laughs> enough talking about Sub Zero rookie cards. Uh, let's talk Bowman. Me and Doug talked about some Bowman and went through the history of Bowman and what to look forward to from the 2021 release. Check it out. What's up, guys? You're joined here. We got 10 years of Bowman talk. We're on the heels of the 2021 Bowman. It's going to be fun. Cody, are you looking forward to ripping some Bowman I on Wednesday? I am pumped to be opening some Bowman. Uh, you know, it's... I think we talked about it last week. Not like the biggest class ever, but uh, I think there's still a lot of people. Austin Martin, Blaze Jordan, Yoelki is my guy. That's the guy I'm looking forward to, but... It's Bowman, man. It's Bowman. There's, there's going to be somebody that we're not talking about right now, just like every year, that in 10 years' time, five years' time, is going to be the biggest hit. And, you know, we're going to go over the history here, and I think you're going to see that every time you think you know who the biggest guy from Bowman's going to be, you are absolutely wrong about 90% of the time. Exactly. And, um, you know, we're not going to be talking about 2009, but if you're new to the hobby and you're not familiar with the 2009 Bowman draft, Mike Trout, look up the prices because that is kind of the standard for every hitter that comes out going forward. So everybody's trying to chase that next Mike Trout and you can see how crazy those prices are. But we're going to start with 2011 because that's a, a year that we broke and it's a year that's within the 10 year scheme. And the big name that year was Bryce Harper. Um, Bryce Harper getting his, his first Bowman Chrome autograph, which you can find in Bowman Chrome. He did have a 2010 USA Bowman card along with Strasburg mania, but 2011 Bowman Chrome is where you're going to find his most valuable Chrome auto, as you can see here on the slide. And uh, we got to talk a little Bubba. Bubba was hot that year. 2011 Bowman draft. He was the big name, gave up, 
going to school to play for football to get into the draft as a high schooler. And what do you know about Bubba, Cody? Uh, not much, other than I I was putting together these slides and going, should we put the picture of him fishing? That feels a little <laughs> mean to Bubba, but that's really what he's done. He's gone fishing. He's not going to be a factor in Major League Baseball. What, he was a rookie in 2019 after – eight years of waiting almost a decade of waiting for Bubba it just shows you the two sides of the coin for Bubba. yeah and I had a, I had a story I actually already told Cody but uh, it was one of the biggest cards I'd pulled back in 2011 I pulled the Bubba Starling gold refractor redemption um, I was so excited those boxes back then were like 80 90 dollars and uh, I redeemed it it came really quick which is you know unlike most people's stories I sent it to BGS got a 9 5 10 and I sold that thing for a thousand dollars and that was probably the one of the catapults to going wow cards are actually worth money i'm telling my friends that i sold a bubba starling when none of my friends even know who he was that i sold for a thousand dollars and you see on the slide what it's going for under 50 bucks yeah so So, pretty good deal there i usually don't talk much about my wins i mostly talk about my losses that's a win uh, that was a win bubba was a big win just want to say too bryce harper the type of player he is and the type of career trajectory he has I think he's still a little bit underrated. I, there's some big, mm. there's some really, really high price cards of Bryce Harper, but like compare that to some of his contemporaries. I think he's a little underrated. Yeah, frankly. yeah. I think he's he's always looking in the shadow of Mr. Trout. So we'll we'll I see. Know. But yeah. hey, if he wins the Philly for uh, wins the title for Philly, that might change everything. That'll right? change everything. He, <laughs> he looked good this week when we watched him against the Giants. So. Yeah, and speaking of Bryce Harper, his actual, you know, fandom carried on into 2012 because not, now he had rookie autos. So all the Bowman sets had Bryce Harper rookie autos and variations. Uh, but there was also Hugh Darvish. Hugh Darvish was the phenom, was the next big thing. We had Strasburg in 2010, but we had Hugh Darvish in 2012, and his cards were going crazy. I remember me and Dan had a break at Dan's apartment at his kitchen table and we pulled a gold and a blue in the same case for a uh, darvish and it was just literally insane so 2012 i'd say was highlighted by you darvish one of the few pitchers definitely to buck the trend of that starting pitchers just don't sell in the hobby obviously darvish was such a unique personality is such a unique uh person in the game of baseball to be coming over took the game by storm one of like the youngest pitching prospects to come out of japan at the yep. time uh and has had a very good career is he you know i don't think maybe when you look at maybe his prices at that time does it live up to it probably not but like you darvish has had a, a very good major league baseball career I'd yep say, yep and still a, a nasty ab if you're a hitter and um you know still very valuable in the in baseball maybe not as valuable as a bowman but uh Still very valuable in baseball. Uh, that moves us into 2013, which was highlighted by Byron Buxton and Carlos Correa. Obviously, Car- Carlos Correa has got that uh, championship and all that that cloud around him. Championship. Um, yeah, yeah. We put that in quotations. Championship. Yeah. And uh, Buxton, I guess you just call him a late bloomer, having finally having some success there in Minnesota, making some diving plays. Um, I don't know. Uh, it almost seems like you'd rather have the upside of Buxton at this point, but uh, those were some huge names back in 2013. Yeah, and if you see on the slide i think these cards of theirs are basically the same exact price i don't think that's something that in 2017 anyone would have said no that oh yeah yeah yeah. correa's the guy and buxton's the bust right and now buxton has had a power surge the last year or so i think there's also a bit of that like he's kind of the hot item in the streets right now whereas obviously the astros have lost a lot of luster uh guys like him and bregman who were super hot the cheating scandal i think has totally diminished their value yeah. as to what it should be. Maybe if they were on a team that, you know, didn't use trash cans to win a championship. But. And speaking of trash, I was trashed by calling Byron Buxton Byron Suxton. So I apologize to all you Byron Buxton He's good now. out there. He's no longer Suxton. He's Byron Good Good Goodston. Yep. Doesn't Rolls off the tongue. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's came good. right off the tongue there. All right, we're going to move into 2014, which was highlighted by some weirdness. Uh, if you weren't collecting the hobby, you didn't know. Chris Bryant's, right? Chris Bryant was the big name everybody was chasing in 2014. Um, the story starts like this. 2013, on Chris Bryant's Instagram, he tweets out a photo of his 2013 Bowman Super Fractor, him signing it, and everybody's like, and at that point, only thing left was Bowman Draft. So, oh, he's going to be in Bowman Draft. Everybody's excited. People are buying the Cub spots. Well, he's not in Bowman Draft. What happened? Where'd those cards go? 2014 rolls around, and Chris Bryant is now a redemption in 2014 Bowman. So everybody's thinking, okay, well, the 13 card is going to be the card we're getting. No, it's a whole other design, which has first Bowman on it, even though the 2013 is technically his first Bowman, which 
that whole year, they had no first Bowmans on 2013 cards. So super confusing. I don't know if they did 2013 that way specifically for Chris Bryant. But then later that year, they started introducing the 13 into Inception, into Bowman Platinum. So the 13 Bowman card was inserted amongst all the other sets. Very, very confusing, and it left collectors very confused. And I know I told you this story uh, earlier today, Cody, and then you, you were looking at some prices. Yeah, uh, this is what confused me, as, as if there wasn't enough confusion. Right. That as I was looking at prices here, obviously that 13, that original one, is the one that seems to be the more in-demand one, I think, altogether over the, t the 2014. But the weirdest thing, if you guys are watching us, you see that middle one that on the slide, that middle card, and it specifically says Inception on it. And it's almost double yeah, the price insane. of the other two. Yeah. I don't know if that's just a matter of strange timing. I don't know if that's a matter of it actually because it says Inception. They think, well, this has to be different. But it's the exact same card. Yes. So it's a little weird. It's a little mind-boggling. Well, I don't quite I get it. But it's. It, I, I guess this is sort of a buyer beware don't spend double on a card that just says it happened to come out of a one box when it is well, the same to be fair, now I'm numbers. remembering how this whole scenario went down because we yeah. were ripping then. That The Inception product was the first one. Okay. So I think when people submitted those to PSA, PSA thought, well, they're all going to be an Inception. Right. Well, it turns out they were in Bowman Platinum. They were in Bowman Sterling. They were in Bowman Chrome and as well. And they are, again, all the, the same card. That right. They were all basically in the same. They know, just like split them They were like all the same table that yeah. Chris Bryant was signing those cards when he posted that Instagram. Absolutely. Post. Absolutely. So I think PSA later was like, well, we can't just put the set on every label so maybe that in a sense is kind of a unicorn cody maybe that's uh I maybe there was so. only a few pop reports on the inception one but if but here's the other thing i guess is like if i pulled that out of a regular bowman box and i just slapped on inception on the title who's to know right you know so that's, I, true. that's, that's true it's it's a weird little wrinkle definitely a confusing situation for everyone involved it totally is. so let's go so something that makes more sense 2015 we had cody bellinger which is probably the highlight of the 2015 season along with glaber and swanson and swanson took a, another one of those guys took a little while to mature and i don't know if he's even quite there yet but the interesting thing was him first overall pick 2015 got traded right away so all of his cards were on the diamondbacks when he was actually on the braves so Probably made it hard to collect him, but uh, and, and uh, you know now he's being collectible from Braves fans. This is the one set. I think we talked about it last year when we were doing our baseball podcast. That this is the one set where I think it speaks to how you don't know what you've got for another three, four, five years. Yeah, uh, you can you can speak to this. Was anyone? looking for Bellinger? Was anyone looking for Glaber? Was anyone um, looking for guys like Kyle Tucker, Andrew Benintendi? Were guys excited to get those guys when they were first? Not Bowman? really. I mean, Swanson had the hype because he was the right. first overall pick. I think Benintendi just because people back then liked Red, Red Sox, Sox players. Um, but yeah, not a whole lot of buzz for Bellinger. I think we had to all go back. So Bellinger was 15 regular Bowman and then Swanson and them were the draft. Right. So I think Bellinger might have been drafted in 14 and then made it in a 15 product, uh, whether as Swanson was drafted in 15 and made it in the draft product right so um yeah nobody was really looking for bellinger i think it was one of those moments once he got called up and he was on that tear with the home runs that everybody so went backwards and be like do i have one i might have one yeah so and there was a lot of that i mean in 14 we didn't even mention it mookie betts is in 2014 yeah and that is um, i mean he's probably the second best if not one of the best players in all of baseball right now and you know we're looking at chris bryant who has had a great career he's won an mvp but like i think most people would say i'd rather have mookie betts and even look i forgot to mention mark appell right mark was appell. in that 14 and i know he's a pitcher but all the buzz around him Everybody was in on him. Get drafted Stanford. twice. Stanford yep. kid. And I'm not even sure if he's pitched an inning of Major League Baseball. Yeah, I think he's working at Home Depot nowadays. But, uh, you know, he, he, he's yeah, fishing he, with Bubba. He might be the best player on his uh, co-ed softball team at this moment. Yeah, you know, right. so uh, 16, uh, which is crazy. So up until Insane 16, class. let me tell you, Bowman was the first release of the year. Always had the one marquee name like Bryant over the years. This year we've got Austin Martin. And then Bowman Draft would have a lot of first rounders. And Bowman Chrome was always the one that's like, what are we going to put in here? And it's always international guys. And, you know, there's usually not a whole lot of buzz in the baseball card hobby up until 16. 16 changed everything. 16 Bowman Chrome. And these are the three guys we're talking about. They were all in the same set. I don't even know what the prices of boxes are. It's insane. But <laughs> Soto, Vlad, and Tatis all in Bowman Chrome 2016. 
That is insane. Yeah. Literally insane that they all hit and uh, they're very prevalent today. That's two guys who already their cards hit secondary market, they hit eBay, whatever. They're going for almost 20 grand. I think Vlad Guerrero Jr., the way he's playing right now, his card is on that way. Yep. I would say, I, I don't know, and again, there's there's a lot of Bowman left in our lifetimes, but I, I genuinely am not sure we're ever going to see a trio of players no. that good out of one class. Yeah, I mean, if we have to hand out an award, that literally, literally 16 Bowman Chrome wins the award for the best in the last 10 years, best of the as of right now. Sure. Right in, in uh, April of 2021. So, and something too we were t we were touching on as we were compiling this list is these are three guys who weren't drafted. Right. These were all three international prospects. Three guys that basically you, you could have watched as much college baseball as you wanted, and you're not really going to know much about these guys. And almost every huge guy we talked about. Uh, there's a few guys who are draft guys, but like it's mostly it's these guys. It's the Acunas. It's the R Luis Roberts. It's, it really speaks to how baseball. Yeah. You Darvish, Shohei Otani. These guys, international. Yeah, more superstars. guys on this list were international rather than drafted, which is crazy. Just if speaks you think to about the it. way baseball is trending. Right yeah. Now. Yeah. And that leads us right into segues right into 17, which was highlighted by Ronald Acuna. There's a lot of other big names in there. I think Royce Lewis had his first start in 17. Joe Adele as well. But obviously Acuna with the way the stats are right now. Um, um, with the way his prices are, 17 was Acuna, Acuna's year. And really from a design, probably one of my least favorite Bowman designs would be 15 and 17. But um, Ronald Acuna, that hype, um, it, he sells his brother's cards. I mean, that's how crazy his yeah. hype is. Yeah. he's. I mean, he's part flavor of the month right now and part like he is the real deal and he has been. I mean, the fact that there are guys you mentioned that, oh, here's all these other guys and none of the, uh, either they've seen – maybe a minute of major league time or they have seen none at all and ronald acuna is not only in the majors he is at least the top five player in baseball right now it might be the mvp favorite right yeah. now only what 23 it's so crazy. Uh, he is he's really something special it's i'm i can't wait he's he's healthy again i'm really excited he's got to run out those flyouts you know that's what you got to make sure you and do. when you got that much swag you don't need to do that <laughs> just pop the chain you're fine <laughs> look at i mean look at him this guy's come on love him we're going to talk about swag. We're going to 18, and we're going to talk about Shohei Otani, who's got the most swag at this moment in baseball with what he's doing. And then you got Luis Robert, too, which is the the famous, um, I think it was either Aquafina or one of those water bottles. It's the water bottle shot of him on signing day. The Dasani card. Dasani, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. They're getting advertising without even asking for advertising. And it was him with a great big smile because he just got a lot of money, and he was ready to play. So those are the two highlights of 18 Bowman, which I feel really transcended this hobby in many ways among all the sports that was like the beginning of our bubble um specifically you know with group breaks it was like otani mania it turned into lonzo mania which turned into zion mania to where we're at lamello and herbert and now we're talking trevor lawrence it was kind of the beginning of the uphill climb in my opinion and you can trace it too for luis robert i mean the fact that he becomes a rookie in 2020 when i think things just go nuclear in, yeah in the hobby in a good way uh it's it all starts you're right in 2018 and shohei i i found it i guess i surprised isn't the word but i just did find it interesting i would say if you take a look right now at the recent sales of shohei cards versus recent sales of Luis robert card i think it's about even right now and shohei may actually have a bit of an advantage right wow. now i think that the all the hype his incredible start and a little bit of like a slower start for Luis Robert. And then obviously last year he had his struggles. Yeah. I think it's all sort of evening out. Obviously they still love Luis Robert, but uh, it, it, it is kind of awesome to see like it's how Shohei has just once again taken things over. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then uh, 19, you got to give it to Wander, which he debucks the trend of Ray's prospects. You had the Evan Longoria, which is in 2007, which there's also a mystery behind that. I don't think the Superfractor was ever pulled. People are still wondering where the Evan Longoria prospect Superfractor is. It's still waiting. But, yeah, it's still somewhere. Someone's got it in a box. You, it's, could, you it's, could be the one. You, you could be the one. Probably would be worth like a quarter of what it would have been worth in 07, 08, or 09. But it's having a good season. Come on. Everybody always said Ray's are not the guy, not the team that you want to collect prospect from. Nobody cares. They don't sell out games. They've never won. Um, I mean, they've, they've made playoffs, obviously, but there's never been a big name in the race. Well, this is the guy that debucks that trend. Wander Franco, number one prospect in baseball. Probably one of the number one selling Bowman guys at the moment, too. Yeah. Wander is about to be ready. It sounds like maybe in summer of 2021, we're going to see the debut of Wander Franco. Really, I know it feels like it's been forever because last year there was no minor league baseball, so we didn't get to see him, but 
a really fast track to the major leagues. If he can come up in June or July of this year, a really fast track. And then, of course, in 2020, we got to talk about Jason Dominguez. Absolutely. Who is I the think, opposite of Juan Franco on the team you want your exactly. prospect to be on. It, 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 to me, the perfect like representation of everything the hobby kind of became in 2020, where it's this guy that – we're not going to see him play at all because of COVID and there's no games and he's like 16 years old or I don't even think he's a little older than that. Uh, but everybody and their, and their mother wanted to snag that card and it's still going for insane prices. It's he's still, I would say number one or two when it comes to the top prospects in yep. terms of the hobby. Uh, I am going to be really interested to see come May when minor league baseball starts are we going to finally see it? that's where finally the market is going to correct right itself. we're going to see what he does we're going to see what he gets i mean the kid is just a monster he's like hulk with a bat out there i mean it's insane his the velocity the, the power that you see from batting practice um but when he has to face that 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 talented pitcher that casey mize or whoever you know these guys coming up uh, maybe the the guys you talked about coming out of the draft from vanderbilt um those pitchers that you were or maybe not vanderbilt who's the, the kumar rockers gonna say, of the world? If you're gonna have to face those vandy boys jack yep. Leiter and kumar rocker uh, we'll see can That's, jason dominguez stack up i don't know right so we'll have to see that and uh yeah like i said yankees are always anytime they have a kind of a little bit of a prospect uh out there and jason dominguez is a huge prospect people tr uh, tend to trend that way and buy those teams i mean we had yeah. greg bird selling great people were clicking greg bird for years hoping he'd turn out to something so i mean then clint frazier went to the yankees we were talking about him as possible one of the biggest busts well, well indians was his card but then he went to the yankees probably why glaber continued to be successful because even though he's on the cubs right he's on the yankees yep and aaron judge has had a little bit of leeway with his struggles as, as far as his prices are concerned so you know jason dominguez does half of what he's expected to do i think it's going to be good for his cards absolutely so, well, don't hesitate. We're doing uh, Bowman all week, 2021 Bowman. We got Hobby. We got Jumbo. We got Randoms. We got PYTs. We're going to do some some mixer-type breaks, so check it out at mojobreak.com. See if you can grab your team, all card ship, in every one of our Bowman breaks. So you're worried about getting your paper? You're getting your paper in mojobreak.com's Bowman breaks this year. So I know other years we have it, but this year we're like, hey, we're going to ship. We, we amped up the shipping department. We're shipping all paper-based. So, you know, none of that stuff on the forums of like, hey, who's not shipping paper-based? All your cards are going this year. So join breaks at mojobreak.com for 2021 Bowman. All right. Well, there you have it, guys. The history of Bowman. And hopefully we're making some more history today. And maybe we already have. Maybe we already hit that super factor for all we know. No. If we, you know. I don't know what day it is. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Uh, of course, go check us out. We're, you're here on Mojo Break Media. If you're watching us, thank you so much. Subscribe to us. We've got more great videos to come. A new episode of The Break Room is coming very, very soon. And if you haven't already, uh, I talked to Dallas Braden last week. We had a blast. Check that out and much more to come on Mojo Break Media. Uh, if you're, of course, if you're watching us and maybe you're not listening to us, subscribe to us uh, wherever you listen to podcasts and go to Mojo Break dot com for all your live breaks and mojo break shop dot com for all of your personal boxes vintage wax whatever you want dan this was fun that's fun see you later we'll see you guys peace